back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hey guys, so I am here today to do another one of the finalists for SBFBO, a book review for you all. And this one was a surprising read for me. I wasn't sure at all what I would think of this going into it, and I actually came out the other side very much enjoying this, far more than I anticipated um, what I would think of it. So I will say, if at first glance this doesn't sound like your kind of thing, maybe give it a go anyway, because it surprised me and it was definitely the book that I was not expecting to enjoy quite as much as I did. It's a story which is highly and heavily influenced by jiu-jitsu, in particular Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is a fighting style that I know next to nothing about. So if you don't know anything about it, don't worry, um, because I didn't. And yet there is a lot of fight scenes in this book which really do take influence from that style and from that technique, and they are done so well. Like, so well. The author is, is a practitioner of jiu-jitsu and you can really see that in the way that they've written this book because the fight scenes are realistic. Like, they could really, really happen the way that they're described and they feel genuine. And even where the author maybe has taken a little bit of creative license by adding in some magical elements, they just felt genuine, which I was so surprised about, especially not being someone who particularly enjoys fight scenes knows anything about fighting, I felt like they really captured the kind of essence and spirit of this fighting technique. So I really recommend um, checking it out, even if you don't know anything about it, because it worked really well for me. The other thing was that I completely loved the characters and the plot, and I found myself really enjoying the narrative as a whole, and it definitely had some really original ideas and some really original ways of looking at things and describing people and places, and just a cool kind of world setup, which starts off a little bit vague and you kind of uncover more of it as you go further through. Our main character is called Sego or Chego, I'm not quite sure how you say his name but it's C-E-G-O. Um, I called him Sego in my head the whole time whilst I was reading it and I definitely enjoyed his character. He's a character who grew up somewhere and we don't know an awful lot about where he grew up because we find that out gradually through flashbacks as we go through the story. But when we meet him, he's down in the underground, which is basically the poor bit of this world. Um, people who can't afford anything live down there and they kind of really scrape by. And he has woken up in the underground and instantly he's been captured by a fight crew and he's been taken to this new place where he is forced to fight. Now, we don't really know too much about how he got there or his story in general at this point, so it's quite interesting to find out who he is um, over the course of the book. But equally, his character is one that I can really relate with and really enjoy. He's just a boy who is trying his best to follow the codes, and the codes in this world are particularly important. The society is broken down into daimos and grievers, and grievers are the kind of fight side of the society. They're the ones who fight in battles. Um, they do kind of essentially duels um, or battles one-to-one, -one, which essentially take the place of war in this world. There is no war because they just do one-to-one -one dueling, which decides the fates of nations, which decides the outcome of disputes, that sort of thing. So the Daimo are like super high tech, crazy, inventive, race and then we have the grievers who are like really high quality prime martial arts amazing fighters um and they kind of have worked out an agreement to work together even though a lot of the people from one race don't like the other and so on but they have come to a kind of accord and they are coexisting and so we don't know an awful lot about the society but we learn a lot more about how it all came to be as time goes on and there's a definite sense of a blend between science fiction and fantasy here. We do have some small fantasy elements. This leans heavier into the sci-fi side because it is a lot of very creative, futuristic tech. And this feels like a very futuristic world in general. Um, it doesn't feel too far removed. I feel like there are definitely elements which make it feel realistic. 
but there are some fantasy bits and bobs thrown in as well. The magic of this world comes from these things called circles, which are infused with a kind of semi-precious metal or stone or something like that, which gives them a kind of power. And the circle is where fights take place. So in this world, um, different circles will give different emotions to the fighters. Some will make them frenzied, some will make them kind of rethink their strategy or be creative, some will try to throw them off their game, some will heighten senses, that sort of thing. Um, so depending on what circle you're fighting in, it depends on where, like how emotionally you're feeling, which I thought was a really interesting idea to add to the martial side of it. The skill level and the martial prowess was already being tested, but then you add in this emotional factor as well, which I thought was really cool. You also have these kind of spectral wisps of light, which are almost drawn magnetically to certain people and certain individuals and certain fights. I won't say too much about them because you find out a bit more as the story goes on, but again I would say they're more of a fantasy element than a sci-fi element, and I like those two bits definitely. The sci-fi element certainly comes through in the technology, which is really really high-tech, really very futuristic and cool, and I really enjoyed it, um, just envisioning this world where there's all sorts of people who are almost robots, 90% um, robots, that sort of thing. And there's just crazy arenas where these fights take place and people are almost like gladiators, but then in a very futuristic world, it's very cool. So all of that being said, Seiko is our main character. He's very sweet. He's very caring. He completely lives by the codes, the combat codes, because he is a griever. And the combat codes are kind of what their society was built upon. The main code that is really, really important is that we fight so they don't have to. And that is kind of the moral compass that all of the grievers are supposed to live by. They are supposed to do the fighting so that the war does not have to happen for everyone else. Um, and it's kind of his journey to find out a bit more about his past, progress through the ranks and hopefully elevate himself in society. But also just to really understand why he is fighting and why he is doing everything he has done to get to be the best person, the best griever, the best fighter, and just defend those people so they don't have to. So his story is a great one, and he's a very likeable, easy character to get behind. He stands up for his friends, and he's just someone who I think is very easy to enjoy as a reader and root for. The other main character that we have who comes in slightly later is Murray. Murray is a scout, so he goes down into the underground where all these sort of street fights are happening to hunt for any talent that he finds down there and bring them up to the academy where they could be tested and see if they are qualified to go and learn how to be a griever knight and like go through the ranks. So he's been scouting for a long time, he's quite disillusioned about life, he doesn't really enjoy the world he's living in, he feels as though many of the combat code ideals have been dropped from society, and he's pretty um, annoyed about everything, but then he sees Sago, and of course stuff develops from there, they have a bit of a relationship building, and he kind of um, intervenes on Sago's behalf and tries to help him. So I really enjoyed both of their characterization. I think they fit the narrative nicely. Their motivations seemed very genuine and seemed like it made a lot of sense. My only real pet peeve with this book, because I did think it was a lot of fun, I do think some of the gender stereotyping that the author falls into and the characters fall into is a little bit naive and a little bit young if that makes sense. I don't feel like it was very nuanced and I would have liked to see more. There's like one female character who is a more prominent character and she's very Hermione Granger if that makes sense. She's very much the smart one that all the boys have to come to to get information and she's breaking the mould by being the girl, the token girl. So that for me was a little irritating to see. I would have liked to see more of the girl in the lead as well um, and like her not being the difference to the boys but being a, a standard if that makes sense. So that was my only real niggle and it wasn't a big one, it was just something I noticed personally but the story itself I really enjoyed. I think the pacing is good. I actually read the whole thing from like 3% to 100% of the book in a day. So I just, I really got into this, I really enjoyed it, I found myself completely hooked in and I just kept wanting to read it every time I put the book down to go out get a snack or something, I would come back and instantly start again. So I really do recommend it. I've already bought the second one in the series and I definitely intend to get to that 
somewhat soon. Um, I'm hoping to get through the rest of the SPFBOs before I go on to the second one in the series, but I am really glad to like have picked up the second one and that there is a second one. I've heard from a lot of the other judges who've read it that the second one's very good too. So generally, I really recommend this. I think the pacing, the story is great, the characters are great, the world is original, the ideas are really, really well executed, especially the fight scenes, and my only niggle was that gender stuff. So in general, I really, really liked it, and I actually gave this a really good rating as well. I gave this a 4.25, which comes out as 8.5 out of 10 for SPFBO, and I certainly think many of you guys will really like it if you like that blend of sci-fi and fantasy, then I think you'll really enjoy this as well. It feels like it's quite a dystopian read and quite a fast-paced one, and I think many of you will definitely like it, so I will link down below where you can pick up a copy if you're interested, and um, definitely support small indie authors, they always enjoy having support, um, it really does help them out, and usually their books are pretty cheap, I think I got the second one for like £3, so it's really really cheap, and I definitely think you guys should check them out, so I highly recommend it, I think you guys are gonna love it, and I'd love to hear from you if you do pick it up, tell me what you think of it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will be reviewing some more books very soon, so keep an eye on this channel as well. Bye guys! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again